the the text definitely is the thing that is the most modern mm. <laughs> compared to the original piece but in it it still carries all the same themes from the original which for its time was incredibly progressive it talked of the silencing of women the repression of women the fear people had about a woman who was independent and financially independent and all of those things and and that what the fallout from that is and it feels incredibly current now mm. even though it was written all that time ago and i think zinni's um modernization of it has really brought it to the you know to this century without it with kind of highlighting that things have changed but they're not changed too much yeah. either depressingly mm. <laughs> jody what's it like though in a theater production like this transforming into and performing the duchess every night would well, you know what my main thing that i've really noticed having because you said about doctor who the other day it was a little bit cold in the theatre, but I thought, do you know what? I remember being in fields in Wales at two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> this <laughs> is a bonus. Like this. Because I'd get, like, I loved my costume, but my coat was so cold. And I just thought, God, I'm a little bit chilly in the theatre, but this is this is bloody lovely. <laughs> I'm indoors, <laughs> it's fine. Exactly. But yeah, but it, it, is, it is amazing because you have the opportunity you know it's the same medium it's acting it's all of those things it's something i trained in it's something i've done before but what i'd forgotten was the joy of you know of of reliving something every day so you mm. can make different choices you have ultimate opportunities to get it right to get it better <laughs> to, to find new things and you know with filming i'm so used to that you rehearse you shoot it and then it's done Whereas with the, and which is an actual pleasure as well, because there's some scenes you don't really want to relive. And in The Duchess of Malfi, this is not, this is, this is not kind of a pantomime. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, of there's a lot of, you know, there's, there's, it's quite a, it's, it's a piece that, that is, has a lot of violence. It has a lot of heavy, you know, very emotional scenes, but in that, you know, you you are with a wonderful group of actors, an amazing uh, stage management team, and it just feels like a very safe space to to share this work with new audiences every night. And that's an amazing thing that people get to come to the theatre and see live theatre, which is such a precious thing. You mentioned a wonderful group of actors. You you play alongside Ju Judo Usu, don't you? Who there's a really yeah. interesting dynamic between oh, the two of you. Oh, there. Yeah, That's playing your son. It's, it's, it's fascinating. <laughs> but but do you have any pre-show rituals, Jodie? Because like Rav and I, before we go live for morning live, we might do a fist pump. Gethin, he likes to <laughs> recite the Welsh language really loud. All design. You know it? what? What do you oh. like to do? I've got like I can I can give you a couple of words. Dioc. There yes. we go. Yeah. <laughs> if you was watching. Yakida. <laughs> That's the most important one for me. Is at the end of the night. Yakida. <laughs> um, we have we have like one can't be repeated. I open the door to the um to the other. Was, we're on a floor of girls' dressing rooms, and in the the second girls' dressing room, I open the door and I say "love you" beep, and there's a word at the end of it, and I say it every night. And if not everyone's in there. I get really panicky because yeah. if someone's gone to the and I'm not saying love you to them, I get a bit stressed. But then I go downstairs and I have a throat sweet. And if I can't find the throat sweet, I have an absolute meltdown. Oh, <laughs> and just make sure down, they're always I there. I irritate everyone with how manic I am. And then I chill out as soon as the lights go up. I'm fine. Yes, I love this information. This is yeah, great. Great so question, good. Akers. There you go. Um, so, Jodie, we've got to talk about Doctor Who. You are, this is great news. You are reprising your role, so as the 13th. Doctor in a new audio series that's coming out next year. This is incredible. Yes. Yeah, so we've we've recorded Mandip and I, who plays Yaz. We've recorded uh, three, I think, so far. There's uh, quite a few in the in the season for Big Finish. And we, um, yeah, it's amazing. It's like the dream scenario, because you play the Doctor without learning the lines. <laughs> <laughs> and that is, I mean, that sounds great. it's my favourite part. I adore playing the doctor. And on the first day I said to Mandy I was like, I don't know if I can remember how to do it. <laughs> and she was like, okay. Because I was like, what voice did I use? And she was like, that one. I was like, okay. <laughs> Your own one. I got in a bit of panic and thought I couldn't do it. And they gave me a chair and I was like, I can't sit down and play the doctor. Even if it's not TV, I've got to, I've got to be manic and run around and fidget. So they've given me like a little space and I, uh, and physically it is, it is 
as exhausting as doing it on filming because I just can't sit still. But so exciting, it is the dream though. scenario. Oh, you play the doctor and win Mandy and I read it. Great news. <laughs> and no freezing cold fields either. Jody, <laughs> no thank you. No freezing cold is the warm <laughs> studio. Win, win. Cheers, Jody. Thanks, Jodie. Good to chat to you. Uh, whilst Jodie continues to travel the universe in the TARDIS, um, an issue affecting us here on Earth right